Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. How far can you go before your nerves break, before your heart stops, before your eyes leave your body? Eyeball, the most blinding horror ever seen. Eyeball. What the? Now, one of them is out to kill all of them. When you least expect it, when you have no way to fight back, a stabbing nightmare becomes a living terror. <laughs> Eyeball. The screams you hear may be your own. Eyeball. No fear has ever come this close. No suspense has ever gone this far. For every murder, for every victim, there is no warning. Don't blink. Don't turn around. Don't even move. Now you'll witness the darkest vision of horror. <laughs> Eyeball. It'll open your eyes and freeze your blood. You can't escape it, because everywhere you hide, everywhere you turn, this is the curse from which there is no way out. How far can you go before your nerves break, before your heart stops, before your eyes leave your body? Eyeball, you may never live to see the end of it. And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for disc number 45 of the 88 Films Italian Collection series, This is Eyeball. According to their website, it says, Released in 1975, Eyeball might just be the late great Umberto Lenzi's greatest giallo. Gruesome and grueling, this torrid tale of a black glove killer with a fetish for plucking out the peepers of his unlucky victims is a personal favourite of Pulp Fiction genius Quentin Tarantino and it's easy to see why. Boasting plenty of bloodshed and some beautiful Catalonian locations, Eyeball is a murder mystery that stands up to the best of Mario Bava and Dario Argento and with its messy arterial mayhem even anticipates the later excesses of such American slasher staples as Friday the 13th. Dare you open your eyes to eyeball? This essential Italian terror totem is finally available in horrifying HD thanks to the body count kings at 88 films. Special features on this disc include a brand new 2018 2K transfer and restoration with extensive colour corrections exclusive to this release. It's got a DTSHAMA dual mono English and Italian soundtrack with newly translated English subtitles for the Italian track. 
it has a documentary of 80 minutes in length called All Eyes on Len- Lenzi, The Life and Times of the Italian Exploitation Titan. It features uh, work detailing the legacy of Rome's most prolific grindhouse nightmare maker and features never-before-seen interview footage with Umberto Lenzi himself and comments from critics like John Martin, Manuel Gamarassi, Rachel Nisbet, academics such as Cal Model and Michael Coven, and actors Daniel Mattei, uh, Giovanni Lombardo Rodis, and director and writer Scooter McCrae. It also has... Eyeballs on Martin Bouchard, a 2018 interview with actress Martine Bouchard. Also has audio commentary by the Jolly Loving podcast, The Hysteria Continues, uh, and eyeball locations feature it and some trailers. The technical specs, well this is region unlocked so you can buy it anywhere and play it anywhere. And the audio is DTS HD MA dual audio. The picture format is 1080p HD 2351. The runtime is an hour and a half and the language is English and Italian. So, let's get into this one. I am a big fan of Eyeball, as you probably have gathered from the kind of giddiness I showed when we announced we were doing this next. But also, if you've jumped back and checked out some of the chats back on our summer run during the 70s, I kind of gushed about it there. I think sometimes Lindsay is fairly and unfairly painted as you know, a kind of job for hire hack. He certainly has some movies where you can clearly see there wasn't much passion in it and it's a paint by numbers replica of what other directors were doing more successfully. You can certainly see that and I would never argue the case that that is not the case, so to speak. At the same time though, he has some of the most remarkable Italian kind of genre output in not only the 70s, and 80s, and also some in the, in the late 60s as well, where this guy would lend himself to doing a subgenre and create a movie which would rank up amongst the highest of those subgenres. So, I mean, if you're talking about spaghetti westerns, he has at least one spaghetti western that I think is worthy of discussion if you were putting a top 10 list together. If you were doing the same with Jallo, Police Procedurals, you know, the kind of weird action science fiction stuff uh, the cannibal stuff he has a title which is worthy of mention amongst any top 10 created list that you could come up with and I think that speaks to him as a director a very versatile um, kind of approach which would lend himself to being like water in different objects or different containers very fluid and able to shape itself as a director, he has that ability. So I think before we even talk about Eyeball and his legacy, it's worth saying that he still gets some eye rolling, <laughs> no pun intended, um, when you mention his name, especially amongst like horror film fans, where it's like, oh, like Lindsay, here we go. And I think overall, it's okay to do that, but I don't think it's fair to kind of, with a broad brush, just paint him as someone who purely made his name doing movies off the back of more successful releases by other directors. Don't think that does it justice, because Eyeball is a thumping good Jallo. I mean, really, really, really good. And for the time period it comes in, 75, I mean, this is post-Torso, and it leans itself to Torso a little bit. In fact, there's a, a replication of a scene with a key which is kind of very torso-esque, and I think it's kind of amazing. I actually prefer the way it's done an eyeball over, over torso, but he's already playing with some stuff that you are getting in some of the earlier Jallos, but doing it in a way which makes it really quite interesting. This is more international, so it's set in Barcelona, um, and travelling in Spain, you get some beautiful kind of cinematography there. The mystery itself is ludicrous but holds up. I really enjoy it. The reveal of who the killer is, and I, I mean, I don't think it's the most original reveal, but it, it subverts some of the expectations that you might have when you start watching it. There's there's plenty of red herrings being put out here throughout the, the movie that don't feel too forced. I'm not saying that they're all completely organic because they're not, but they, they don't feel too forced at the same time. Some of the effects in here, whether it's actual like eyeballs lying on the ground with viscera in the background, 
or there's a couple of beautiful kind of slash neck effects which I think are brilliant and even in this 2K restoration really really hold up or it's maybe something like um, the Bruno Nicolai score in the background which is just this kind of whimsical very Euro kind of uh, bouncy sort of soundtrack that just kind of continues through here and gives the movie a lot of life. There is a lot to enjoy about Eyeball, but it's specifically the way the story is crafted and the cinematography, which really makes this one stand out. Yes, there are some zoom, kind of zoom shots that Lindsay is most famous for, and you get plenty of that whether it's on characters' eyeballs as you see things. And yeah, there's some of that nudity that you would expect from this era of cinema, but it's handled with a death and a very kind of at times fine touch that I think lends itself to kind of reevaluate your opinions on someone like Lindsay. If all you've ever seen is something like Cannibal Ferox, and you're like, this guy's a hack, he's just copying Cannibal Holocaust, and you've maybe seen some of his other kind of outputs, maybe not necessarily something like Spasmo or or something like Paranoia. I think when you sit down and watch this though, what you get is some great like attention to detail and attention to suspense. It really builds the story out, like layers it out as you go along and each reveal is handled in a way which is kind of, like I said before, organic and it makes a, a, an interesting mystery. It's one of these ones that you can kind of get sucked into. When viewing the movie though, I would 100% recommend Italian language. The English kind of soundtrack is fine and I'm going to use that as kind of fine but in a lot of these movies when you get to that level when the translation comes in the dialogue is ropey AF you know there's people yes of course I am the killer and I was the killer all along and it's Italian it's handled a bit better the nuance is there and the in the script and it's not as kind of Scooby-Doo-esque, cheesy, kind of mustachio-twiddling villain sort of reveal that you get. You know, yeah, I expect you to die, Mr. Bond. You know, it's not as cheesy as that. It's actually surprisingly... Surprisingly crafted for what I, like, you would assume is later date. I mean, by this point, 75, the boom of the Jallo is gone. I mean, we're, we're now in the decline, the slope down. Uh, this is the same year that, you know, Argento would swing out with a big dirty pair of deep red, you know what I mean? And and be already crafting things to the next level and taking it in a more horror-esque capacity. But you watch something like Eyeball, you can already see, certainly off the back of a movie like Torso, that things are starting to get more violent and the building blocks for what would be the American slasher are on display. So I think all that is handled really, really well. I think just overall, it's a fun story. You have, instead of the traditional black gloves, we have red glove killer here, wearing a kind of red, for all intents and purposes, kind of water repellent jacket. We would call them a gagool in Scotland, but it is it's like a rainproof jacket, which is also red. And there's a stark contrast with what you're seeing there in terms of what you would usually see within the genre. So we're playing with colour, we're playing with different things. The, you know, the, the killer's using not a kind of straight razor, but it's just a flick knife, so to speak, or like a dagger almost, more than anything. So we're getting that aspect, and it's still very bladey with its killing, which I really enjoy. Uh, and I think that when we move too far away with that later on and some of the later Jallo, we kind of lose that that level of the the criminality of what's happening. The, you know, it's less about the the sexual gratification you get from stabbing someone if you're a psychopath, I'm stressing, uh, than it is when you're using all manner of power tools and all the rest. So I really like those elements as well. Overall, I think when we speak, I mean, this is up there, not only in Lenzi's outputs, but in the Jalo genre as well. Eyeball is the absolute must watch, it's a necessity uh, if you're trying to get into this subgenre and you are you don't know where to start, there are plenty of places that you can start to get into Jallos but like all roads will eventually lead you to eyeball and rightly so it's one that really really does stand up and it's interesting when you see 
other titles that he did which are more softer, like I said before, you're looking like something like Spasmo, which has a much softer palette, and then you watch this one, it's very, very, very harsh and cool. I, I really, really, really like this one. When it comes to grading this one, it's a 4.5 out of 5. Um, it holds up every time I watch it. The 88 Films disc itself, the print is gorgeous. Like, I was actually very surprised by how much colour correction and cleaning up they'd done. The audio is not perfect. There's still some crackles and pops in there that I feel personally could have been cleaned up a little bit. But it's not enough to distract you overall. I checked out the movie alternating on the second watch in between the English language and the Hysteria um, commentary, which is a ton of fun. Those guys know their shit. Uh, it's very entertaining. It is worth buying this disc for the Lindsay doc on it, which is 80 minutes of like taking notes on movies that might not be available on Blu-ray yet to try and track down. And people speak with real reverence on the career of Lindsay, which is it's refreshing to hear that because it's very easy, like I said, at the upfront here, just to kind of lump this guy as a, as a, a genre hack who was a gun for hire just doing lesser versions of other people's works and I don't think that's fair at all. So that's kind of brilliant and it's, it's a packed disc and I love to see 88 films do that sort of stuff, like really spend a bit of time in craft an original kind of documentary and put that out there for, for you to examine and you to make your own mind on. So it's kind of great. It's a great disc, really, really, really good. It's on sale just now as well, so you can go away and check it out. It's a worthy collection. If you are trying to get into European horror, specifically Jallos or anything from the 70s, Eyeball as a must should be on your list and you should be checking it out. So a 4.5 out of 5 for Eyeball.